are you able to disclose why you are someone and what you take what what's your take on on on, on the someone in that was uh, availed to you uh, my lawyers received the, the call out uh, that's uh, Chikumu Band and the uh, associates that uh, they wanted us at the police the genesis of this is that about three months ago we got uh, call outs to go to the police at the time i was hospitalized in the university teaching hospital and the doctors at the hospital did inform the police because the police refused to accept that i was actually sick my lawyers gave them the sick notes uh, they were told that they needed to present me before them and uh, they the, despite the fact that the lawyers had given them the sick notes, that same day they authored another call out. I basically had about three call outs in one day. And uh, they were informed that I was actually admitted in UTH. Five officers came to the University Teaching Hospital, and the doctor was compelled to handwrite a note to confirm, despite the official sick notes stamped by the University Teaching Hospital. The doctor was compelled by the police to write a handwritten sick note and explain to the police that I was actually in the ward. They actually came into the hospital with my lawyer. So there were five and uh, plus my lawyer six. And the doctor says, my, my patient is here and uh, it's not possible for her to come to the police now. So that passed, I went for treatment out of the country. I've come back, hardly about 10 days, and my lawyer has got a call out. So he told me that, look, let's go you hear what the charges are. Because this is persistent, it could be anything. Let's go. So we went today as obedient citizens, and uh, we were interviewed by a team of uh, three officers, I think an assistant commissioner, inspector of police, and uh, an inspector. And uh, they read the charge. The charge is that um, I, Edith Nawakwe, on dates unknown, between September 2020 and January 2021, I did threaten violence, contrary to the penal code section 90, and abducted Feruna Hatembo and lodged them in different hotels and guest houses against their will, which traumatized them. And now they filed a complaint of threatening violence and abduction before the police. So naturally, this is a complaint from citizens and the police must follow through with the instructions of investigation. So I was warned and cautioned. They asked me if I had anything to say. I have advised them that at the present moment, I have nothing to say. Unless they opt before, they opt to go to court. They now have mountains to say. Because uh, the genesis of this Feluna story is in the public domain. The players are known. The beneficiaries of, uh, of uh, the Kalomo land is none other than the president himself. So he knows what he did. And uh, I would have no interest at the moment to provide any further detail until I face my accusers in a court of law. So that's what happened today. Uh, we, we concluded and left. Now, the, 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 the case itself, it's against the one and question which was done to the kind of beneficiary with the president, and the, the matter did not take off. So, how does it uh, turn before the other one is concluded, another one is charged with the same offense that are soon passing? Actually, you may recall that uh, 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 how I came into the picture was because of the issues of Lima Bank. I went to Kalomo to look for properties which were in private hands, which were Lima Bank properties. And that's how I get in touch with the, the Felunas. I was preparing my defense case 
ovu Edith na wako defame zi haka inde ichilema and I was preparing it and it was well prepared in fact if the journalists take their time and go to the high court our affidavit was watertight we were really looking forward to see haka inde ichilema prosecuting his case of defamation by Edith Nawaku. Because then we would have asked him pertinent questions. Now he's head of state, so he opted in that case that uh, he was not going ahead because the law doesn't allow him to prosecute private citizens. But in between that, I have had threats from Margareta, who wrote to, to me and said that I should respond within seven days that I did defend him when I said, and I quote, that the last persons to be in custody of the Felunas were UPND themselves. They threatened to take this matter to court, it lapsed. Then they wrote another one, their lawyer, uh, just came and threw a document outside in the rain. I didn't pick it up. And I've been waiting for them to go to court. Because look, everyone has a right in court to defend and put their case first. So I've been harassed and harassed by their members on the press, by these people who think in their compensation scheme, some people were not included. And uh, if you recall, the question here is, there were a lot of people, there were NGOs who were running around in circles with them in hotels, in, in different places in the bush. Now they say that even as though they were in Kaloma and Choma in the bush doing those videos with Vitukule, Nicholas Spira and them, I was still threatening them, but they were in the custody of other people. So, I mean, I, I, I'm saying that, look, this is no time for giving them chance to, to think that uh, they can run away. I'm actually elated that even though the president dropped his case on defamation, he has opted indirectly through Feluna and Milton to be in court. So we will meet each other in court and uh, I hope that they have their defense. You, you see, the. The, there was a time when I was accused of uh, defaming a, a president and I said we meet in court, we went to court, they dropped, I hope this time they are not going to be talking of, uh, what, what do they call it, At, uh, when you are accused, put on defense, they come back and say no we are not proceeding, no, no, no. the knowledge, I don't want a knowledge, let the police take this matter to the uh, DPP, proceed. I don't want a nole. If you are going to put a nole, don't even start because it won't work. But what's your general feeling? Is it because of the statements you've been making to the media that they want now to follow up on this case? And... Precisely, Hakainde Ichilema is such a person whose ego is larger than Zambia. And he thinks that he can shut everyone up. Because look, I mean, <laughs> just face it, he can't manage this country. He's incompetent, he has no skill, he has no acumen of being a head of state. Nothing. Because his preoccupation is which next politician is going to inconvenience. This, this, some of these cases, they have the power, they can arrest me, they can lock me up. It only serves as an inconvenience. To convict is another issue, because the conviction is on the basis of fact. And uh, the only reason that the Haka Inde Ichirema is behind this hoax is that uh, he's just scared of his shadow. And uh, this is the nature of men who are not fulfilled in life. He thinks that uh, being president is the best thing and all of us must shut up and start clapping for him and say ah no some of us can't some of us can't he comes from Wengwa. he was brought up in a village he needs to understand that his duty is to the village
to the people on the street, to the hunger that is uh, befallen this country, unprecedented suffering. That's his duty. He has a golden duty given to him by God to save the people of Zambia, not to continue harassing innocent people. I've just come back from treatment. I need to rest, I need to recuperate. And for, for him, it doesn't matter. He would ask, when I was on treatment, they were posting. They were posting that they want me dead. <laughs> Luckily, God doesn't take out people like that. So, uh, it's the statements that I've been making. How can I be making statements? I must shut up. People must die of hunger. Who is going to speak for the people of Zambia? Who is going to speak for the people of Zambia? And I want to say, listen, Zambians, get up. Let's start a movement to get Haka in the out of office. And that movement should be very serious. It requires a sacrifice. It requires dedication. It requires a service to the nation. This president has reintroduced the colonialism. When in 59 years did you ever think that state house would be populated by foreigners? We just foreigners in the First Republic. Now him, he's much more secure being guarded by a foreign national than his own citizen. Security in the people is in the people of Zambia. And there are many leaders in the world who will confirm that Security is not about guns and what. Security is about the stomach. Security is about food. Food, defense, and medicine, that's what constitutes security. The fourth angle in that realm is that the people must be happy. But this is the present where you go to the market, you go to the river, you go to the field, everyone says, ah, tatinkanao haka inde. Talema nao. He must go. He's fake. And I agree with them. I'm just reporting. Do you hope to see the president? In For the what? Law? For what? For what? I have no, I have no time on my agenda to see him. If he is a, a president who says today I'm going to Kanakantapa to talk to women on how to grow soya, I would be running after him. If today he says this afternoon, call me. You've been complaining about uh, UTHCD. A cancer disease hospital, there's no medication. I'd be running after him. Uh, do you know that in this country, at this hour, there's no functioning CT scan in the hospital? Not one. People are queuing up at, the, at a minor circle. People are dying on the queues. There's no medicine. So, see him for what? He doesn't inspire any following. He doesn't... Uh, I mean, look, a president whose people are hungry, he says, no, umutengo study juicy, just keep quiet. I think it's a tragedy. And Zambians must understand that uh, voting for Haka Inde is Zambia's worst mistake that they did. Because this president will not take us anyway. Okay. So coming back to, to the charge where we've been warned and cautioned, the law requires that uh, the first complaint be exhausted. Now, the first complaint of abduction which was made against the, the president by the Peronas has not been concluded in court. No, in fact, it wasn't a complaint or an abduction against the president. The Feluna's arrival in town was a, a complaint about the fraudulent acquisition of Farm 1724 in Kalomo, which did belong to the late Hatembo, the father to Feluna, and that Feluna was in fact the administrator. And she argued at the time, and it's on court record, that she had never met Hakainde, she had never signed any contract with Hakainde. That was the complaint. So, uh, the next complaint was about missing persons. Her daughters went to police headquarters and filed a complaint of missing persons. We've never been informed by the police about where they went and what they, they were doing. The third complaint was uh, another complaint of missing persons by Feluna's brothers. 
they went to central police and fired. People were looking for them. I personally went to police headquarters and saw the then head of CID investigation, Mr. Kataka. Mr. Kataka was not fired, but the whole department that was following this case was dismissed. They are among those uh, uh, many police officers who were dismissed. Uh, they, they are, they are, see, their argument was that these were the people who were who wanted the Haka Inde to be arrested. You understand that? So uh, there were complaints of missing persons. I was never in the picture. Save the UPND was saying that I'm the one who was forcing Feluna to file a complaint of fraud against the then leader of UPND. That was what was there. And uh, when they were running around with Zitukul and them, I went to the police. I said, look, the relatives are looking for these people. If you have any information, which these people are saying that I'm threatening them, please, I'm here. Because the family is in distress. Feluna left a very, very ill child and left a lot of things unattended to. And uh, that was my preoccupation. How do you manage a child when the mother is nowhere to be seen? The daughters were saying, we don't know where mommy is. And uh, I, I, there were no answers. So we saw the police arresting some people and whatnot. Now, where you are sitting, there's a joke in the village where you sit and <laughs> then you have to accept that. Yeah. Indeed, <laughs> you are the youngest. So, Kalendia Katicho Chise. I think what what UPND and their leader want to do, they think that they can wash their debt on me, and uh, that's I'm I'm saying. Look, uh, the best is to conclude these matters in court. I've always dared them to say, let's go to court. Someone who wants to talk about it. now they are following the correct procedures. They have inspired the Milton and the sister to complain. And the police are entitled to investigate. They are only doing a public job. They are public servants. Me, I always have nothing against the police. That's why when they call, I respect their cause. I've always shown up at the police when they call me. Because I recognize one thing. They are only doing a national duty to inquire. Because tomorrow I'll be the one to go there and complain. And we need to give the police the room to investigate, prepare the dockets and hand them over to the DPP. So um, that's the status of things. It was Feluna complaining about the fraudulent acquisition of a farm by Haka in the Ichirem in Kalomo. And her argument was that she never signed the assignment document. And uh, those were the issues that the police were following. Issues of fraud, alleged fraud. I correct that. <laughs> no. okay. Before they could conclude the issue of missing person, which was filed in court, then the same people, the same people that he alleged the relatives are, were missing turned around to. to no, in fact, it's the missing persons who are the complainant. From my own understanding, uh, it's the missing persons who have complained that they were abducted, they were threatened. And they had come to Lusaka to seek help from me. In that attempt, I ended up threatening violence to them and abducting them. What do you make of the uh, summonings and uh, the various ar arrests of um, opposition leaders in the country? I've already said that Hakainde feels that he's entitled to be the only living leader in this country. But that is undoing. Uh, you know, when God wants you revealed, they will make you have these strange traits of intolerance, inability to sit down with people. Because who is a leader? A simple definition of a leader is someone who can lead. And what is leading? It's a simple sitting down to discuss. What are we going to eat? How are our children going to go to school? How are we going to manage this agricultural season? That's the art of a leader. The Nehemiah in the Bible. Where you find a broken wall and say, He come together, let us rebuild the, the, the wall around Jerusalem. You can do it if you have the will 
the correct people, the desire to serve, and the genuine, genuine belief that you are in that office because God has placed you there to save his people. But if you don't have uh, the belief that uh, you are there to save, but you are there for yourself, then you become a tin pot dictator. You become a uh, emperor Bokas. You become the almighty. And when you come to that point, the country is lost. My only worry now as uh, one of the leaders is that uh, the hunger is a time bomb. Hunger in any nation is a time bomb. You see, Zambians are always happy when they can have the Anshima. Don't uh, tell them that, no, go and eat masuku, go and eat pumpkins. Zambians don't like that. We love our Anshima. If we can have our Anshima with Wondwe at the correct price, no one will tire their anxiety. But my worry right now is that uh, President Haka Inde Ichirema is tiring the anxiety in our people. And uh, that's my major worry and I'm, I'm praying that it should come to pass. I was hoping that this year the government can put good measures in place so that by next year people are able to calm down their anxiety about how they are going to survive. Because if you have food, you can sell, you can look after your family. And that's, that's, the, that's the art of a leader. You must lead, you must provide, you must motivate your people. You know, I see young people in town, I see youths in town. They walk around, some pushing wheelbarrows, some literally wondering where they are going to sleep. And I said to myself, our president has lost an opportunity to motivate his age group. Can you imagine Bari in town and saying to the young people, look, we don't have money as a nation, but let's do this. He would mobilize the whole country just by a simple push. But he's busy flying, today he's in Israel, my Bari could Dubai. He is much more comfortable with uh, some of us. He is not comfortable with his own children and young brothers and sisters on the street. And, and for me, that gives me pain. Because this is our age group. He left us in awe. He has left us wondering what we did to God to deserve him as our leader. So it's a big, a big, a big challenge, but uh, Zambians are patient, and I believe in the spirit of a Zambian to work hard. Zambians don't want to beg. Zambians want to be facilitated to work for themselves. And this government, this president, is incapable of mobilizing productive power from the people of Zambia. Thank you very much. Honey.